What's up, everybody? It's your friend, Lukey, and I am here. It's U.S. Open Week in the year 2021, so in hindsight, we'll look at this and I'll look a lot younger, and we'll go, that was a long time ago, and hopefully I keep doing this, people keep tuning in, but that's, that's too far in advance. Let's stay on focus and talk about Ensel Hoffman Golf Course in Carmichael, California, a surrounding area to Sacramento, California. And why did I play this course? Because it has the same architectural, or architect, I shouldn't say architectural design, but architect as Torrey Pines, where the United States Open will be head, held this year, a major. And I wanted to kind of get a feel for the architectural concepts. Uh, the Bell family, Billy Bell, both Bells, the father-son duo, are kind of like the, the lifeblood of California municipal golf courses. So there's a lot of elements in this course that will carry over to Torrey Pines. Some things will just, and I know people are like, I wanna learn about Ansel Hoffman, but let's just start with this because it is the US Open week and I'm trying to get some extra views to bring into my great content. So if you like this, hit the thumbs up, subscribe and leave a comment and all that good stuff. The big thing, the big difference in my opinion with this course and Torrey is, Torrey is a little bit through my perception, wide open, more wide, but in the US open conditions, there will be bigger rough. It has ocean views, but I think a lot of the concepts, the dog legs, those holes are very similar. Ensel Hoffman, there's a few things. If you go to play this recreationally, you should know. Playing from the blue tees, it's a little bit longer. It says it's 6,500. I'd say it's about 6,300, but it could be playing true 6,500. It never felt exceptionally long, but you have to keep your ball in play. That is a major theme of Ensel Hoffman. The ball must be somewhere that is in play. It doesn't have punishing rush, rough, but it has punishing trees. So it plays, in my opinion, like a... Uh, local like a Sacramento Open type championship course it punishes shots that are not hit to specific areas it's a municipal form of target golf right you have to hit a fairway from a fairway now you have a chance to get your approach shot to the green most greens have multiple bunkers and wayward shots are punished the big protection at this course are the greens so it's very much hit the fairway, attack a green, but the hardest element is that the greens have tons of slope. The greens are somewhat fast for a municipal course. They're actually faster than some expensive courses, and it offers a good variety. It's not the easiest course to get up and down from, which is not a, a theme of most municipal courses. The great thing about it is you can probably play a round of golf without losing your golf ball, there's only one or two water hazards that come into play at all in this course. They didn't really factor in. I didn't notice them. Maybe you hook or slice a ball into an unplayable area and can't find it. But really, if you're keeping the ball in play, making some fairly decent swings, you're probably going to lose at most one or two golf balls. You can play this course for about eight, ball, eight golf balls, I'd say six to eight. It's more recreational. But I must emphasize... The last three holes, really, really hard. And it's more about keeping the ball in play. And where the course really shows its teeth, in my opinion, is when the narrow width of the fairway with the tree line fairways also match the length of the course and start creating those 430 yard par fours. That's when this course really becomes what it is. And that's probably the same with Torrey Pines, when, which I hope one day I'll vlog that the difficulty really comes from the length mixed in with tricky greens that really force you to have to hit it as far as you can, punishing inaccuracy, and then when you get near the greens, you don't get to recover if you don't hit a great putt, if you don't put a good stroke on it. So very challenging. It's, a, it's what I'd call a player's course. If you live in the Sacramento area, you're a fairly good player. This course and Hagen Oaks are going to be the two courses you're more than likely going to be drawn to because they probably pose the most significant challenge. It's a thinking man's golf course. It's not a course where you go and probably just want to whack the ball around. You're probably going to find yourself very, very frustrated. This is more of a player's course. The rate is between like $33 to like $22 um, 
on any given time. And it's very walkable. There's not a ton of undulation. So this is the Ansel, Ansel Hoffman Golf Course Vlog on US Open Week. Let's go. Ansel Hoffman Golf Course, the vlog, the long way vlog. I've been wanting to do this one. It's a historic course. It's a player's course. This is the first hole you drive into a park. No drives were recorded on this day, but I did keep it real and didn't fake it. Very narrow, dogleg right, really thin and over the top swing, but I cheated the system and snuck onto the back of the green. Actually snuck out of that hole with a par. Somewhat forgiving first hole. This second hole, really tight, narrow fairway for a par five. And then I left myself with a three wood and I didn't fully step into it, which might've been a good thing, but I think I could have gotten home. I didn't realize how close the hole was. I actually had about 30 yards left after that three wood. And that is a pretty sick feeling because I'm not the longest of hitters playing from the blue tees. Definitely a good feeling. Just didn't catch this slope I was envisioning. Stayed up to the left, but I two-putted made par. Really sick start to the round. Uh, this is kind of what Ensel Hoffman's about. Very narrow fairway. You got to keep it in play to give yourself a shot. Didn't completely give myself the optimum shot. And then I had to shape a shot, which was a cut. And I ended up in the bunker because I'm not capable of hitting that shot at that given moment. Had this deep bunker shot. It was really a long shot. Had about 30 yards out of there, and it actually forced a two putt really hard. This is a neat hole, but the locals told me that this used to be a par three that started at the bottom of the hill and went up there. Now it's a long par four, I guess. The routing changed. I actually smoked my drive a little bit more than I would have wanted to, and somehow had a sand wedge in, which you're going to find out I really needed a gap wedge in. And, uh, yeah, I know some people are going to say, well, you really didn't do that. I did. And uh, in your face. But left a short side chip. Really a bad effort. Left town with a bogey. Uh, this par three really didn't like it. I didn't really like any of the par threes at this course. Not to be a hater. They just were kind of plain Jane. You don't see that. That was on a slope. If you miss left, there's a slope. Ended up two putting that as well. This was a cool hole. This hole is uh, 430 or so from the blue tees it's just a hole where you have to hit it as far as you can driving range golf hit a driver missed out right and then had a seven iron through the trees shaped my shot put it on the green never mad at that and two putted from there to make par this is a tricky par five because it is very tight and it wants you to have to hit a draw it also is the hole you see coming into the course when you drive this, I almost killed a guy. I was playing, trying to pull it, and it stayed right on me. And a guy decided just to sit in his cart and wait for me to hit, and he was right in my range. So you're going to hear, hear me and my playing partner yell four. And the kind of a theme is narrow, long, hard greens. That is the overarching theme of this course. It's narrow. It's tight. If you look at this, I'm going to have to try to hit a cut and a good shot to hold the green. The rough is not an issue. I just didn't start that out far enough to the left. And then you get punished because the trees knock it down. It's kind of having trouble with yardages all day at this course, to be honest. I wasn't doing the best. That's where my ball ended up. My camera on the bag fell over, but I actually hit a really good 60 degree wedge shot in there and made par. It was pretty sick. It was a really good feeling. I'm not gonna lie. This hole is ridiculously hard for me. It's a very narrow fairway. There's bunkers always on this course, and it'll be probably a theme of the U.S. Open, that the bunkers on this course are in places where you're definitely going to try to miss to. I tried to rope it around this tree and hit, like, the world's best pull. Instead, I ended up going greenside, hitting the bunker. Good shot, but ended up with a bogey. The ninth hole is that yardage I hate where it's going to be 200 yards plain jane going into it and then i just got stuck between clubs went over with this chip because i was never fully comfortable thank you for watching this vlog i appreciate anyone who contributes or subscribes or even likes a video this is a passion project and i'm just trying to do the best i can